Hello programming students. So today um, I'd like to take you through some high-level programming concepts, uh, in particular object-oriented programming concepts. So I'm not going to take you too much through object-oriented design per se. We'll go through uh, that around week seven or eight, I believe. But I want to take you through uh, chapter three in the chapter three PowerPoint. I want to take you through words and phrases that I'll be using to try to explain uh, the object-oriented principles and object-oriented concepts. And I want to make sure that we're all on a level playing field there. So first I want to take us through, if you look at the, if you're going through the slides, it starts on around the fifth slide, class and object concepts. So there's four bullets there and it says an object uh, is a self-contained unit, like a form or control that combines, combines code and data or data. So if you look here at our invoice total application, we have a form and the form is an object. So, and if you remember in Java, everything uh, at a very high level is an object. Everything inherits from that big O object and the same exists in C Sharp as well. So anything that you interact with in C Sharp that's not a primitive type that we'll also go through as well is an object. So this label is an object. This text box is an object. This group box is an object. This radio button is an object. This button is, you guessed it, an object. So all of these things we can interact with. So it's, it's at a high level, at the most generic, these are objects. There are things we can interact with in the code. If we go into the code, we can see that if I click on this radio button, I guess it'd make more sense if I go here. So if I click on maybe this button, I can interact with it. I can say the location of this button is, is this location, or the name of this button, the size of this button, and etc. etc. So we can interact with these things in the code as objects. So how is that different from a class? Well, here is the object we're working with. And if we scroll to the top here, we can see that it is part of this button class. And if you interact with it, or if you hover over it, the, the IDE tries to give you a little bit of context or a look into what this thing is. So you can see that it says initializes a new instance of the system windows forms button class. So when you think of the difference between an object and a class, a class is just a blueprint of what will happen when you make a new uh, object of that class. So here's the class or the blueprint that will be made or the blueprint that we're going to use when we make a new button. And the button is the actual implementation or the, or the thing that we're going to use or interact with in the code based on that blueprint. So this could be the blueprint or the blueprint of a house. And then here is the actual house that we built with it, or the button. So an object is an instance of a class, and the process of creating an object is called instantiation. So that's just making an instance of that class. So. Here's a button, here's our submit button, but you notice if we have, if we go down to say the exit button, here's the same exact class. You can see both of these buttons were highlighted, but two different instances. One is a button submit, one is a button exit. So they have slightly different property, though they have the same properties, but they might have different uh, values in the property. So for instance, this name is btn exit and this name is btn submit. Uh, the text of this might be exit and the text of this might be submit. And it's going to have different things that it does when you click it. So when we clicked on this one, 
it exited the application and we clicked on this one it submitted it so it does different things when it's clicked so they're different instances of the same class and then the fourth uh, bullet says more than one object instance can be created from a single class and that's that can be seen with these labels so there's one label class there's one label blueprint just like there's one house blueprint say for a particular floor plan and they can they can create multiple houses from that blueprint so whenever I talk about object concepts these are objects that are created from these class blueprints so if we can go into maybe this button and if you go to uh, your keyboard and you look at the F12 key and you hit F12 it'll actually take you to the class for that button and it'll show you all of the properties on it the events it'll tell you what it inherits what it implements what uh, interface that it implements etc so don't worry too much about this we'll go over uh, more object-oriented concepts later in the course but just know that these are the blueprints for our objects and these are our objects Okay, so now going to the next slide, property, method, and event concepts. So uh, these are more C-sharp-ish terms. They're, they're not used as much in Java. Java, you have fields. Um, C-sharp, you have properties. So when we're talking about properties, that's when we're, we can go back to this design window and go over here to the properties window. And here's all the properties that we have on our components. So here's our button. And here's the text property. And remember we gave this text property of calculate to this button. So we can still see those properties back here in the code. So notice that we have our submit button. And that's when we start setting the properties. Here's a location property. Notice that it tells us what it does. It gets or sets the coordinates of the button. Here's the name property. It gets or sets the name of the control. And it shows you, if you hover over it, the IDE tries to give you a little bit of context. It shows this little wrench that tells you it's a property. And it tells you that it's a string. So if you ever have any questions about what these things are, you can always go to anything and hover over it. And it should give you a little bit of context as to what that thing is or what that thing does. So those are properties. So how are those different than methods? Well, methods are the operations that an object can perform. So these are all things that maybe you could say describe an object. Well, methods are things that the form or the component can actually do. So properties are usually nouns and methods are usually uh, verbs. So here's a click method that is on our invoice total form. So this click method will actually do something when it's clicked. So it's a, it's a verb, it does something like run or catch or play. So methods always have some sort of signature. So this signature is private, void, so it doesn't return anything. Signatures uh, in C-sharp for methods are essentially exactly the same as Java, uh, the base Java. So we'll go over uh, method, method signatures a little bit later on. I wouldn't worry too much about what all these words mean, but if, if you can remember what all these are from Java, it's the exact same in C Sharp. Properties, methods, and events. So events, we went over a little bit in one of my lectures, uh, but events are, are usually handled by an event handler, and then those event handlers are attached to 
uh, methods. So whenever this click happens on a button, I want you to be tied to this BTN calculate click event. So if we F12 in this, it should take us to this method. So events are just what we want to have fire whenever something happens. And we want something to be listening for that event to happen. That way we can trigger something to happen, something else to happen. So if you look at this little lightning bolt, that signifies that it's an event. And we can actually go back to our design window, click on a button, and then you can see this little lightning bolt over here again. So if I want to go to this exit button, and I want to go to the events of that button, here you can see the click event. And you can see that it's already registered to my btn exit click function or method. And you can also see all of these other events that can happen on my button. But they they might not, like it might not be in the button per se, it might be something the button inherits from, so it might be higher than the button. But still you can uh, register to other events, like if the background image changes on your button for whatever reason, you can have a method that listens for that. Um, but the one we're going to usually use is the click event of a button. So whenever something is clicked, we want the form to know about it, and we want something to happen when that button is clicked. So in your properties window, you can see all the events that can happen on your components, and then you can also go back to your categorized window of, of properties as well. So your properties and events are in the same area here. So notice that you can switch between your properties and events down here in this properties window. So remember that the difference between objects and classes, if you instantiate two or more instances of the same class, so again, just like in this label, you have the same properties and events, but those properties and events um, the values or methods assigned to them can vary from one instance to another. So that's all that that slide is saying. So I think that might be all I wanted to cover um, as far as a high level is concerned. So notice if I come back here in the code and I want to start interacting with say a button and I say btn exit and then I use the dot operator, there I can see all of the properties that are on that button. So here again you can see this little wrench that tells you it's a property. And then here again you can see the lightning bolts to tell you that they're events. There's also a lot of other things in here. You can see these boxes uh, which are link expressions. But mainly we'll be using these events and properties when you're interacting with, with your objects. So you can interact with the BTN text property. So let's say we want to change the property of our button text whenever the submit button is clicked. So it's exit now. So how about after I click the submit button, let's change the property of my BTN exit name. And I want to change that to you clicked submit. So it still does the same thing even though I clicked submit. It still exits the form. All I did was change the name. I didn't change the event that fires. So I'm going to click 12 here. I'm not a premier customer. I want to click calculate. It didn't change the name. wonder why. Let's go back here. Um, BTN calculate click, BTN exit. Oh, that, that's the name property. I want to change the text property. Sorry about that. Let's try that again. Let's put 12 in here for the subtotal. Here's my exit button. So when I click calculate, the last thing it should do is change the text of my button. So calculate, and here it did it change the text property to you click submit. I'd have to probably make the button a little bit bigger for you to actually see the submit part. Let's make this button bigger. 
start it again, calculate, you click submit. So we can interact with properties of events in our code. We can interact with them in the properties window. And they're usually shown by that wrench or that lightning bolt. So I'm going to go ahead, this, this video is getting a little long, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to the next uh, lesson. Thanks.